Voilà. So now I'll switch in English, and I will talk to you about COVID-19, past, present, and future. So first of all, we saw a, a big outbreak of uh, a new virus that came in, uh, in uh, December uh, 31 uh, um, last year. And uh, it came because the uh, Chinese uh, authorities said that they found a new virus. So this is um, uh, a timeline uh, given by uh, Mr. Cavallo. Uh, it was published every, um, every week in Nature. So it was very nice to see uh, what was the follow-up from the, the nature pers uh, perspective, but it's important to see that they split the, uh, the events into two categories, the medical one or scientific ones, and uh, the uh, political or um, uh, country-wide uh, information. So I won't go into all the details, it's just to, to show you that a brief overview of what happened in the last six months or the six months of the beginning of the virus. So just after the, the, um, uh, the, the virus was declared, um, less than 15 days afterwards, the, there was the first uh, death reported in Wuhan uh, concerning this virus. Um, and just 12 days after that, the Chinese uh, decided to, to, uh, to lock down their, uh, the Wuhan uh, um, uh, city and afterwards some uh, bigger areas. In the same uh, exact period, the first draft of, of the, 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 the genome, uh, the, the virus genome, was released. So uh, within a very short time frame, within two weeks, we had the new virus, the new respiratory, uh, respiratory syndrome, and the release of the genome. This is very something that is uh, never seen before, and uh, we have gained a lot of it, attention on that. Uh, since then. In February, it, it started to, to spread everywhere, uh, everywhere in the world, and in March, you know that it, it was uh, so important that the um, many uh, countries and companies announced the starting of clinical trials on many different approaches. I will come to, to some of them just at the end. And um, we, we have started to see a lot of lockdowns, including in France. Um, in April and May, they, they, there was uh, um, a lot of uh, discoveries concerning other uh, proteins important for the virus, including also uh, strange reactions or why people started to, to, uh, to, um, to wonder why it was important for getting the, um, uh, why would, would you come uh, deaf or not? And so <clears throat> I won't go into all the, the dates. You, you will have the slide and, and you have the, the link where it's even more detailed. But to, to, to briefly sum up, uh, within six months, we, see, we started from uh, no virus uh, information to a full virus information. But there's, there's still a lot of work to do. And uh, just to, to give you also the date, we, we don't have the information in February, but we started to see the first structures of the, uh, the virus proteins early in February already. So why did I use the past, future, and present title? It's because this coronavirus, this beta coronavirus, is not really new. We know from the, the early 1930s and up to 1960s that there were already other coronavirus, we, which were called uh, 229E or OC53. And uh, th there is a nice summary, which is uh, written in French, so you can, uh, it's really nice and, and easy to read, uh, where they sum up all the knowledge known at that time. And um, if you look at that, you'll see that we were knowing a lot of information already on, on the coronaviruses. So even if the virus was new, it was not brand new and coming from nowhere. It was really perfectly described, inc including the, the, the disease, the, the propagation, and the period where it was more active. <clears throat> This, this is also to remind you that it's not the first time that we see a severe acute respiratory syndrome. There was already the first one uh, in the 2002-2004 period. And then a new one uh, called the MERS, uh, which has um, some appearance and disappearance within the, the, the last decade. 
And of course, you know that we have started a new one, but we have no idea of when it will stop. So the other question was, is it coming, uh, where is this virus coming from? So uh, I won't go a lot on, on, on this, it's just to show you some information. So the Chinese say it's coming from pangolin and they did the analysis of the pangolin genome, but also of the bat genome. And they saw on many different uh, proteins, and I will detail them uh, just after, um, what are the similarities between all of these sequences for each open reading frame. And <clears throat> so they, they, they published that in June, but there are also many articles, including one from the CNRS, we, we gives, who gives um, some theories of some information about what could have happened to, to see this major outbreak. And in certain articles, they talk about the infection of um, uh, Chinese uh, workers early in 2013. So. Um, um, I'm not sure we will find out where, where it came from, but for sure it was a cousin of existing ones. <clears throat> so what's the genomic data we, we had at first? Um, we observed that it's a single-stranded positive RNA. So it means that you, it can be transcribed, uh, uh, translated or already when it is infected, uh, infecting the cell. So it's very effective at, at uh, uh, propagating inside the cell because the, the RNA is already available. Uh, it, and the, the, the most important thing is it, it contains the five prime cap and three prime polyadenylated RNA. So it's perfectly recognized by the cell as its own RNA uh, and it's efficiently translated. So uh, as I told you, the first genome was deposited in GenBank um, in uh, early January, but up to now, we have more, uh, more than 39,000 genomes. So we have a lot of information to analyze the structure of the genome, the mutations, the evolution. And I, I know there's a talk about that, so I, I won't go into the details. I gave you a picture of uh, the, uh, the genome organization to show you there are, multi, there are big open reading frames and they are split into multiple smaller ones. I will go into detail just after. So uh, I won't detail here, but it's just to give you again a pointer to uh, the nucleotic reference sequence. So what happens when the virus comes to a, a, a targeted cell? So the first entry point is the angiotensin uh, converting enzyme. Uh, which is uh, present uh, at the surface of the cells of many, 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 many cells. And uh, um, this, uh, this main entry is very efficient. Once the, um, the virus has entered the cell, it, the, the, the uh, RNA is released. Uh, it hijacks the, the host ribosome. I will show you how it does that on some proteins. And then very soon, there's the replicase of the virus, its own replicase, which is assembled and also a lot of other uh, polypeptides, which are later proteolytically cleaved. And then the replication complex starts to produce new viruses, but also the, the uh, uh, RNA for producing the proteins. They assemble at the membrane of the uh, reticulum endoplasmic. Then there is a yeast, uh, sorry, there is a virus budding to uh, produce more viruses and to expand elsewhere. <clears throat> The genome by itself contains, uh, so it's a little bit less than 30 kilobases, and this genome will uh, contain two main transcripts, or uh, RF1A and RF1B, and then some structural proteins. So the difference between both is the structural proteins are important for the shape of the virus, and I will go, uh, I will detail them. But all the other proteins are very important for the activity of the virus, including the, uh, the, 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 pro the proteomic, proteolytic cleavage by the, the, uh, by the protein encoded from the, the, the long polypeptide, but also for, for the replication of the, the virus. So this is a very complex virus, and I will come back to, this, to the fact that it's very long, it's 30 uh, kilobases, and it's not supposed to be that long. I will explain to you why. Um, so you have here the acronyms, and it was uh, summed up in a very nice paper here. Here is a 
all capture coming from, again, the same paper published in French uh, in 2009, where you have the sum up of the organization. So it's a cartoon. Uh, you see the spike uh, uh, protein is trimeric. We have, for now, 164 structures uh, available for of this spike. So you see there's tremendous work uh, to gain insight into the, the, the details of the binding and the movements of the, uh, the spike protein. We have for now, zero structure of the membrane protein, which is essential to this um, virus architecture because it, it's an enveloped virus. We have only 14 structures of the nucleocapsid. So the one which is uh, alighted in uh, gr uh, gray and yellow spheres, this is the, the protein that will have two roles. First one is binding the RNA. The second one is uh, producing the shape of the um, uh, the virus, and this this is provided by a, a very important complementary uh, complementary interaction uh, between the RNA and and the protein itself. We don't have a lot of structures, and they are not complete. But I will show you some details we have in this particular virus. So even if it's a beta coronavirus, there is no immaculate esterase to date. Um, we have no information about the lipid composition, so it's presumably coming from mostly the reticulum endoplasmic, uh, uh, but we have uh, no real uh, information about the, the composition. We have some structure of the main protease, uh, only seven, and we have a lot of RNA polymerases, 355. So we have more than 500 uh, structures, and you see uh, where the, the, the main efforts were, uh, were, were done on the spike, and on the RNA polymerase. So first of all, I will talk briefly about the, the spike. So there are many, many uh, very detailed structures. So I prefer to, to, to provide you a, a cartoon of the, the, the protein. And you see it in uh, gray and blue. Uh, so the, the spike protein is composed of two different proteins, the, the, the spike by itself and the receptor binding domain, which is in cyan. Um, and this big receptor binds to the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, which is present at, at the surface of our cells. Um, uh, I want to, to tell you that this uh, ACE2 is hormone dependent. Uh, so its expression is increasing by, uh, uh, with age, and it explains probably why um, uh, children and women are less exposed uh, to, to the virus uh, statistically than, than, uh, than men because it's really driven by hormones. And so you have nearly no, uh, very little expression of ACE2 when you are young, but it increases a lot after. Um, what happened very rapidly too is the, um, the spike protein is not nate, as it's shown here on, on, on the scion picture. It's made up of a lot of shielding glycans, and you see these glycans are very flexible. So this is what you see on the right side. Um, and again, this will probably be the, uh, discuss at length, but it's very important to see that the glycosylation is uh, an important way to escape also the, the, the immune system. Um, so, sorry, you, you get uh, other pointers here, and it's very, uh, I recommend to go to the New York Times here. They, 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 they show some uh, short videos about uh, the, the animation of that. But uh, as I said before, it will be probably um, disclosed much better after. <clears throat> so, the membrane protein is a short protein, 222 amino acids. It's very important for the envelope, so uh, it needs the, the, um, the, the lipid context. So, if you use soap, you uh, remove uh, the, the, this envelope, so you kill the virus. Um, so, it's very essential to the uh, virus morphogenesis and assembly, even if it's probably not very well structured. As I told you, we don't have the exact composition of the, 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 the uh, the membrane by itself, we don't know if there's a, a, a compositional bi bias in lipids or the use of cholesterol, etc. But um, for now, we have no indication that there is something really important uh, uh, required. And since it's membrane protein, there is no structure for now. So it's uh, one of the lacking information uh, from a structural point of view. If you go to the envelope now, there's only one structure, but they did a solid state NMR, uh, NMR and they found out that this protein, which is very small, uh, 75 amino acids long, is uh, composed of 
um, transmembrane domains very, very um, closely linked together to form a pore that you see here on the, 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 the B uh, capture. Uh, this uh, pore is uh, mostly closed. It's, um, it's called a, a dry channel because there is no water molecule inside and it's controlled by stacking of phenylalanines. Um, it's important uh, for the release of calcium or for the entry of calcium. And uh, if you remove uh, the, the, this uh, gene from, from the genome, then uh, you will get an attenuated uh, uh, virus. Uh, so it's very essential for virus, virus budding. So it's the end of the cartoon that I showed you. If we go now into the nucleocapsid context, as I, showed, as I told you, there's not a lot of information on the complex uh, organization of the whole protein uh, RNA uh, structure, but the sum of the, 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 the information is available as a, a micro, uh, microscopy, electron microscopy uh, data. So you see on the left the N terminal, the C terminal, and where the, the, the uh, RNA is uh, binding, and you see the, the arrangement of the two subunits of nucleocapsids. And we know from each of these 419 uh, amino acids that they will um, form uh, an helical, um, uh, uh, helical formation around the RNA with a binding of a, a stretch of seven uh, our, um, amino uh, nucle nucleotides, sorry, uh, with a micromolar activity. Affinity, so it's very um, it's very important to to bind. It can self-assemble because of this affinity, and this protein has also the requirement to bind to the uh, M uh, protein, so so the the the, the membrane protein to uh, link this nucleocapsid to the um, uh, to the membrane itself. So uh, there, are, it's a multi-parted uh, uh, complex. If you go now to the main protease, again, I won't go into a lot of details here, but just to tell you, uh, it, it's, of course, uh, the, the, a very important protein because the, this protease has the, the, the role to, um, uh, to cut the two main ORF, uh, we, which are very big, more than 500, uh, 5,000 and 7,000 amino acids long, uh, into smaller pieces, uh, giving all the, the uh, other uh, uh, proteins and uh, non-structural proteins, but this one is very essential because it will cut this into smaller parts with a very conserved motif that you can see uh, from the superposition of different coronaviruses uh, proteases, and you see the shape uh, of uh, this um, uh, the, the, the left part here where an inhibitor is bound. Uh, so there, there has been a lot of work on trying to find new inhibitors on that because, of course, if you block the main protease, the, the virus cannot produce its essential uh, functions. So you, you will kill the virus. You, you will pro prevent its propagation. So there are many, many papers um, uh, concerning the uh, the possibility of getting new compounds, you get one here, which is illustrated from the paper of uh, Zin and, and, uh, and colleagues. Um, I think it's one of the, the, the main papers. Uh, and they, they provide many inhibitors here with micromolar or sub-micromolar uh, um, affinity. So very good candidates to start with uh, to, to develop new drugs. But as you know, it will take years to get that. Uh, there is also a nice presentation from the PDB. So um, this picture was taken from the PDB. Um, and you, um, there are a lot of functioning there also, but it's very important. The, um, I won't go uh, into all the proteins, but I want to highlight some of them. Uh, one which is very, uh, very happening uh, rapidly is the NSP1, the non-structural protein 1. And this protein is uh, hijacking the system, the host system, to produce mostly um, the RNA and the proteins of the uh, virus. So it turns out that this small protein, 180 amino acids, uh, will enter the ribosome, the host ribosome, to prevent the 
um, uh, normal mRNA to enter into the ribosome, so it blocks translation initiation. Um, it, it, so the, this is uh, taken from a, a real structure, it's not a model, and uh, it will um, hijack the system in the sense that First, it will block the, uh, the production of proteins required by the cell, for instance, for, for its defense, but also it will allow the uh, translation of the virus, preferably, uh, and so it will bypass the, the, um, the, the, the cell response to uh, force the, the expression of the virus. <clears throat> and to, uh, to, to, to go to the, the, the last most important uh, uh, RNA polymerase. I go to the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So this is uh, a polymerase which is encoded inside the, the genome of the, the, the virus, uh, which has many uh, different proteins, which are uh, NSP7, 8, and 12. But as I told you, the, the virus has a long genome. It's 30 kilo bases, and our theoretical approaches have been uh, studying this phenomenon, saying that above 20 kilo bases, you will get more, much more mutations uh, from this kind of replicases because they are not very uh, uh, proof uh, or error prone. So um, there is an additional protein uh, inside the, um, the specifically the, the coronaviruses uh, um, categories, which is called NSP14. Uh, and this uh, protein will do, uh, will do the, the proofreading of what is uh, provided. So you, you get uh, at the top down here uh, a cartoon uh, of representation of what happens. But you see that there's the arrangement of NSP7, uh, 8, 1, 8, 2, 12. So this is the main role of the replication. And you see uh, on, on the left more or less the same colors. And so you, you see the, the and the, the, the possibility of getting the uh, amino, um, uh, the nucleotide inside this hole here. Um, but the NSP14 will be able to see if the synthesized uh, uh, nucleotide is correct or not, and to uh, push back the, the, this, uh, this, uh, this um, polymerase to redo the, the, uh, uh, the replication. So, this is... Uh, wait, 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 okay. So, just to conclude, this is just to tell you that we have a lot of structures, we are understanding a lot of things. I showed you a rendered CV here. And now, what happens, uh, we, we knew from early sep uh, September that we have, sorry, we have 30 through, uh, 30, 23 new RF uh, detected, so we have much more proteins to, uh, to assess. They, they have been a lot of uh, uh, activities to, to, to search, so I won't go into the details here, just to show you that now we are seeing the role of other RFs. And um, I, I gave you just the link so you can click to, to go other things. I recommend you uh, one uh, video which is mentioned, and I thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup, Stéphane, pour ce... Superbe, cette superbe revue. Alors, y a-t-il des questions Vous démutez votre micro et vous les posez spontanément. Que je peux demander une question naïve euh, euh, Est-ce que c'est connu si euh, l'interaction entre... Euh, oh, I, I should ask in English, maybe. Euh, non, non. Bon. Whatever. Uh, uh, is uh, the, the interaction between uh, the spike uh, 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 and the ACE2 uh, a conserved interaction, actually conserved interaction across all uh, beta coronaviruses? So with different hosts and so on, or is, uh, is there known that there's some structural variability interfaces are different or so? Is this known? I think it's it's quite known. It's uh, uh, it's quite conserved. Uh, the uh, but, but I don't have the uh, I saw the figures, but I don't remember them. But it's quite conserved. But I think it will uh, it will be given afterwards. But uh, yes, it, it's quite conserved. So it's like it's acting li like a hook with the trimer. So it's really hiking um, on, on the AC two. So it's very conserved. Yes. Thanks.